In this video, Blazy and I are going to tell you why your next budget overland rig should be a 20 year old Cadillac. And no, I am not kidding. Now, of course, the go to budget overland rig for years and years and years has always been the Toyota Land Cruiser, and for good reason. But uh, well, I've got a little bit of a secret to tell you. I'm not really a fan of the newer Land Cruisers. Now, of course, arguably the go-to right now is the 100 series Land Cruiser from the early 2000s. And well, I don't know, an unpopular opinion, but Toyota has kind of engineered all the excitement out of the Land Cruiser. It's just too mechanically and, I don't know, cosmetically maybe perfect. It's just a little bit dull. Maybe that's irrational, but the second reason for maybe not going the route of the Land Cruiser is perfectly rational. They are stupid expensive. Like an early 2000s Land Cruiser in this market, in decent shape, it's gonna run you $20,000 plus, in some cases $25,000 plus. This vehicle, which I'm taking through, Nathan's Crack, this is a $6,000 Escalade and it's actually kind of awesome. Now, what are the requirements to be a good overlander? Well, in my mind, it's gotta be a vehicle which can tackle long distance and extreme comfort, but also tackle off-road terrain. Now, this Cadillac Escalade is based on what they call the GMT 800 platform. It's the early 2000s General Motors full-size truck platform. So it was like the Silverado, the Sierra, but also vehicles like the Tahoe, the Suburban, the Yukon, and of course, the Escalade. Now the Escalade was primarily bought by like two people. There was Barry Manilow, and then there was like Jay-Z. Uh, and yeah, they don't have much of an off-road following, but they really should, because they're surprisingly capable. Now Blaze and I are at our off-road course here at Tumbleweed Ranch in Colorado, and we're gonna see just how capable this Escalade is. Does it have enough off-road chops for your long overland adventures? And the first challenge is called holes, these articulation mounds, and we shall see how the all-wheel drive system works. Now that is a big surprise to me. This second generation Escalade doesn't have a conventional four-wheel drive with two high, four high, four low. It's got a full-time all-wheel drive system with something called Stabila Track which is electronic traction control. So dipped into the first hole, independent front suspension with a solid rear axle, nicely into the second hole. Really articulating well. It's okay, Blaze. All right, all right, lifting up tires a little bit. Do we have enough ground clearance? I think we do. Come on, come on. Very impressive, actually. That was really pretty good. So we had enough ground clearance to tackle holes. And just like that, we are out. You good, Blazy? You got tossed around a little bit there. That was an impressive result. Now, the Cadillac Escalade does not have a four-wheel drive low system. So, um, unlike a lot of more conventional off-roaders that have a four-wheel drive low, the Escalade is always in high range. However, with the torque out of this six liter, it really does do quite well in slow speed situations. And it's geared quite nicely when you drop it down into first gear. Of course, if you wanna go crawling, right? A Land Cruiser, a GX are gonna be the vehicles for you. They've got a track, they've got in some cases locking or diffs, they've got uh, proper low range transfer cases. But I would argue, especially with the Land Cruiser, they're just not good crawlers to begin with. They're too big, they're too heavy, they're too cumbersome, and then you load them up with shovels and lifts and bumpers and winches, and they're just, none of these full-size SUVs are all that fun off-road, in my opinion. They're just way too cumbersome out on the trail. Now, for an overlander, where you're just covering lots of distance over dirt and rough roads and that kind of thing, size really doesn't matter that much, and in fact, having a larger vehicle to hold your friends in gear is a good thing, and... Even with all-wheel drive, this Escalade will go a surprising number of places. Now let's tackle the log course. This is a test of ground clearance, um, underbody protection in some cases. This Escalade doesn't have a lot of underbody protection, at least from the factory. But the cool thing about this platform, right, is that you can really interchange a lot of bits from vehicles like the Tahoe, vehicles like the Yukon. So if you wanted to add some of these goodies, uh, it might be a little bit hard. You may have to do a little bit of retrofitting, but it certainly is out there. Now, ground clearance wise, it's actually surprisingly capable. We did have to remove the running boards, but once you do that, 
really have a surprising amount of ground clearance. And the best part, as we're finding out over logs here, the ride is truly, truly top notch. Um, this has got to be one of the best riding SUVs probably in history. It is that smooth. Uh, when you are trying to get to those cool camping sites, right, you're gonna be tackling a lot of like um, bumps and uh, washboard roads and dirt roads. You can take the Escalade over those roads at practically any speed it feels like and it just handles it all with so much composure. And then you add to that the fact that I'm basically sitting in a lounge chair leather recliner. It's a fantastic road trip vehicle. I'd argue better than pretty much any new vehicle today. It glides over just about any road imperfection. Now it does have something called RSS, road sensing suspension. So it's got height leveling rear suspension with these little air bladders and the shock absorbers. Um, and then it's supposed to be adaptive and help you kind of, you know, a uh, contour to the road. I think a lot of that was probably marketing back in 2003 when this vehicle was new, but um, whatever it is, it's got soft springs and soft, uh, <laughs> soft uh, shock absorbers. So the, the net result is a very compliant ride. Now let's try, try rocks. This is probably where the Escalade's not gonna be as happy. And these rocks might look small on camera, but they are actually quite sizable in person. And let's see if the uh, all wheel drive system, approach angle, departure angle, and articulation is good enough to get us over this obstacle. So far, so good. That six liter just humming away. Now, fun fact, this six liter was the most powerful SUV on the market when this vehicle debuted for the 2002 model year. It's got 345 horsepower, but lots of low end grunts. It just absolutely crawls over anything from a torque and power perspective, even without the low range. And the gearing is surprisingly adequate for this kind of thing. This is about as hard as you'd probably want to tackle out on an Overland Trail. And I think we just crawled right up it. A little bit of a bottom out there at the end, but um, really amazingly capable. Now let's put it all together and tackle Volcano. And Volcano is a great test of approach departures. It's a really steep little climb. It gets very articulated and we shall see how the Escalade does. Now, one of the things I positively adore about this Cadillac is just how over the top it is. This interior is ridiculous. It's got the finest walnut from the highest quality fake plastic trees found in the US. It's just got like ridiculous design touches with this bulgary clock and these overdone gauges and the little tiny infotainment screen. And it's just fun. Something you miss in a lot of the Toyota products. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And actually it's held up really well. It's got a lot of nice tech for an 03. It's got heated seats. It's got memory seats. It's got satellite navigation. You can spec it with even satellite radio. It's got rear seat um, uh, temperature, all for six grand. And this is six grand with everything working. 187,000 miles. So like quite a lot of miles, but everything works in here. Even if it does smell a little bit like a Turkish hookah house. All right, let's check out Volcano. So this is gonna be a good test of the approach and departure angle. And we'll also get it kind of nice and articulated, I think as well. It's gonna take it nice and slow. Oh, very impressive actually. Now, I don't wanna bottom out the rear end, so I'm gonna really get this thing off kilter and see if we can't get tires in the air here and see how that traction control system actually work. So I'm going to point it up kind of at a side slope here, really start lifting up tires right about there. Okay. It's thinking, it's thinking, come on, stability track. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got stability track. Oh, definitely slapped the rear end a little bit on that departure, but actually come on, come on for a 20 year old Cadillac, Cadillac, that traction control worked really well. Maybe not as good as a track from Toyota, but really pretty impressive. Well, we did have a little bit of a casualty coming up Volcano. You can see that the rear bumper cover has uh, broken a couple clips and then actually the parking sensor has fallen out. But I think I can pop that little guy back in and then we'll be good to go. A uh, couple new clips and yeah, clearly the part triangle was an issue there. Now, arguably the most important aspect of any Overland rig has to be reliability. And of course the Toyota Lexus products are gonna be really solid, but 
These GMT 800 series GM vehicles are so reliable. Take a look around. They're everywhere. I mean, they kind of blend into their environment, but you see Tahoe Suburbans, Yukons of the early 2000s, literally on pretty much every street corner, at least here in Colorado, they're a dime a dozen, and that's because they just last. The six liter engine in this is basically an industrial unit found in vans and work trucks and that kind of thing. So it goes 200, 300, 400,000 miles between rebuilds. Overall, very solid vehicles and super cheap compared to their Toyota brother and plus you can tow like 7,000 pounds sleep in the back aftermarket's pretty small but throw on a set of BFG KO2s like we did on this Escalade and hit the trails have some fun let me know what you guys think in the comments section below as always this has been Tommy with TFL Classics check out tfl-studios.com for all the latest and greatest in new and used SUV reviews